origin, <laughs> history, and significance of the Crow Project. And it's very quiet in the back. Oh, I don't mind. My Crow Project shot anyway. Is that okay? Not bad. Yeah. Great. Don't mind me if I reference my materials that don't go off topic and get a bunch of and use thread. Uh, I'm going to talk about the idea for the Names Project was conceived in 1985 by a activist Cleve Jones of San Francisco, and it was actually during the candlelight march in remembrance of the 1978 assassinations of San Francisco Supervisor Harvey Milk and Mayor George Moscone. For the march, Cleve Jones had people write the names of loved ones that were lost to AIDS related causes on signs that would be taped to the San Francisco Federal Building. All the signs, uh, um, signs on the building, once they were there, he had appeared to be like a patchwork quilt. So he got an idea. The quilt project was officially uh, started, officially started in 1987 in San Francisco by Jones, Cleve Jones, Mike Smith, and volunteers Joseph Durant. Jack Castor, Gert McMullen, Ron Cordova, Martin Mayo, and Gary Dushchuk. Important names to remember, they started this. At that time, many people who died of AIDS related causes didn't receive funerals. Due to both the social stigma of AIDS felt by the surviving family members and the outright refusal by many funeral homes and cemeteries to handle the deceased remains. Lacking a memorial service or gravesite, the quilt was often the only opportunity survivors had to remember and celebrate their loved ones' lives. The first showing of the quilt was in 1987 on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. The quilt was also displayed in full on the mall in Washington, D.C. in 1996 and returned again July 2, 2012 to the mall to coincide with the start of the 14th International AIDS Conference. The quilt is a memorial to and celebration of the lives of people lost to aid the AIDS pandemic. <coughs> Typically, very personalized individual quilt panels are created by the loved ones of someone who has died of AIDS or living causes. Each panel is three feet by six feet, the average size of the human brain. Panels are donated to the Names Project Foundation where they are grouped with other similar panels and assembled into 12 by 12 sections called blocks, like the one you see behind me. These blocks can be seen at local displays of the quilt, typically containing eight individual panels per block. The Names Project Foundation is headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia. They have 21 chapters in the United States and more than 40 affiliated organizations worldwide. The AIDS Memorial Quilt itself is also warehoused in Atlanta, but not being displayed, and continues to grow. Currently consisting, this is recent data, of more than 48,000 individual memorial panels, and weighing an estimated 55, 54 tons. The goal of the quilt is to bring awareness to how massive the AIDS pandemic really is, and to bring support and healing to those affected by it. Another goal is to raise funds for the community-based AIDS service organizations to increase their funding for AIDS prevention and education. As of now, Funds raised by the quilt for direct services for people with AIDS has exceeded $4 million. The number of visitors to the quilt to date has, is more than 20 million. The number of names on the quilt is more than 94,000. The size of the quilt is 1.3 million square feet. The viewing time to see the quilt is spending only a minute per panel takes over 33 days. Yet, only about 20% of the people lost to age-related causes are represented in this tremendous quilt. Only 20%. 
And one of those represented is my long-term partner of 19 years, Joe Garcia, who died on Memorial Day 1991. And there another loved one of someone whose panel is represented in the block on display here today is our dear beloved volunteer, Roz Gilbert. And I would like to, I think she would like to speak about her personal relationship to the significance of the Memorial Quilt. So I invite Roz to come. 